Hey, what's up guys? Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. <clears throat> what I'd like to do today is talk a little bit about uh, playing a 3-3 stack defense with split field coverages behind it. Uh, most of you who have, who have uh, been watching any of, our, any of our blog stuff know that we are an over team. We are not a 3-3 stack team. We are a 4-2-5 over team. Uh, but the 3-3 stack defense is still very popular um, in high school and middle school and, and lower level football. So I kind of thought it would be interesting today to, to take, a look at, uh, take a look at the 3-3 stack and how you can play it with split field coverages behind it. All right, I'm not going to talk today about 3-5-3 or 3-3 you know, stack with man free or three deep principles. I think that's the way a lot of teams currently use it. I think that's the way you see it the most in the high school and the middle school level. What I'd like to talk today is about 3-3 stack with five defensive backs behind it playing a 3-3-5 very similar to a 4-2-5 and how, you know, the theory of a six-man box can kind of equate to doing both things. All right, today we're going to talk about 3-3 stack only. We're not going to talk about 4-2-5 principles, but the boxes within six-man boxes are both the same. So I think you can get to um, the same things within each principle. I think the 3-3 stack is very popular for a couple reasons. Number one, I think a lot of kids... At younger ages and at the lower level of football, I think a lot of kids play better while moving. All right? um, I think you can take smaller kids and move. I think you can take uh, kids that maybe aren't your uh, everyday defensive linemen. Sometimes in high school or middle school, you're not always dealing with the, you know, the 285-pound the nose and the 300-pound tackle and the 260-pound defensive ends that run 4840s. A lot of times you're at a school and, and you have to play football with the cards that you're dealt. So sometimes the 3-3 stack, you can play some smaller athletic kids and you can move them. And a lot of times they'll play a little bit better on the move. Um, a lot of times it's easier for kids to play on the move because teaching kids how to block rec and how to understand the blocks that they're seeing in front of them and then how to equate that into how they fit in the defensive scheme sometimes is a little bit harder if it's not done at an early age by the time kids get to high school if you're trying to teach them how to, how to block rec and a kid's been running around you know trying to penetrate or basically just been looking in the backfield to find the football a lot of times it's going to take you a long time to teach that kid not only what block recognition is but where his eyes need to focus on that block recognition so sometimes the three three stack can be a cheaper, easier way out of struggling with kids that have never been taught how to block rec before. All right, so when you're moving or you're in a position to constantly be in a two-way go or a two-way movement, a lot of times lesser athletes can be a little bit more successful and usually players with less football knowledge and experience can be a little bit more productive moving than they would be in a static uh, position where you are just relying on block recognition and block destruction, okay? Um, I think the downside to that is if you're always moving and that's your base concept, um, if you are getting hurt in the run game or if you're getting beat, you really don't have anything else to fall back on because you've already been stunting and moving, so you really don't have anything else to fall back on. I was always taught that base defense is a way to start out and then you build movement stunts and pressures into your base defense so that if you need them or if you're struggling or if you want to disrupt the offense, you have other things in your package. But you start off with base defense first, all right, and then you stunt pressure as needed. Well, if you're in a 3-3 in a three, three stack and a two-way move situation with your players, a lot of times you're moving on almost every snap unless you're going to drop eight. A lot of times you might be moving on almost every snap, and if you're doing so, you're going to have a hard time if – you cannot stop the offense. You really don't have anything else to fall back on. Also, I think presenting an offense with two big bubbles, even though you're going to be moving and taking the bubbles away, I think originally, in theory, you're presenting two big bubbles and a team that's really good up front that can get after you and mash a little bit. I think they'll be uh, extremely effective to both sides of the ball with two big bubbles, and they'll be able to move people off the ball to where your movement is not as effective. So I think, that, uh, I think that two big bubbles on each side is going to be a little bit of an issue, even though you know as a coordinator you're going to move to take away one of those bubbles. 
all right? Now, with five defensive backs behind it, where I really like it is you take that structure that provides a lot of movement, all right, and it provides a lot of uh, discomfort for the offensive lineman and the quarterback, all right? You take a theory that's got a lot of movement and you back it up with split field coverages that can defend just about any formation that you see, and then you could build in adaptations to the coverage based on how you're getting hurt. I think that, as opposed to the straight 3-5-3 or the straight, you know, uh, one high concept, I think taking split field two high concepts, mixing them with the movements of the 3-3 stack, all right, I think you could be very successful and put together a very good defensive package with the 3-3 stack and split field coverages behind it. Okay. The next thing is anytime you have more second level players like odd fronts do, like a 3-4 or a 3-3, I think your, your blitz has become a little bit better and a little bit uh, tougher for the, the offense to pick up and the quarterback to pick up because you have more second level players that are able to um, either rush the quarterback or drop into coverage. I think it's easier to do than it is out of an even front. So I think the movements and, and the potential blitz scenarios, all right, um, coupled with split field too high coverage, all right, I think that's a way that you can make the 3-3 stack very effective at the high school and the intermediate level. All right, so what we're going to look at first is 21 personnel, all right, base tight end, two back sets. All right, we're going to look at two different ways. We're going to move away from the tight end, and then we're going to move into the tight end, all right, and we're just going to show it with standard our standard and how we would play our standard split field coverages. So the first thing, if you were to move away from the tight end with the three up front, all right, so if you move one gap away from the tight end and you then brought, all right, I have him listed as a Sam linebacker in the 3-3 stack. He could be called whatever you call him in your defense. If you brought the strong side stack linebacker, all right, in the C gap, you have now presented the offense with basically an over front. All right, you've recreated an over front. You've got a three and a five to seven on the strong side. You've got a one and a five on the back side. Okay, after the movement, all right, you probably have to bump the backers a little bit to where your Mike is an A gap player here and your Willie is a B gap player there. All right, so you've moved away from the tight end into an over front. You've got your Mike as an A gap player. You've got your Willie as a B gap player. To the strong side of the formation, you're going to go ahead and play. Okay, quarters, coverage. All right, versus 21 personnel, that's going to allow you to get a ninth man in the box. So you're going to go ahead, all right, and you're going to play your strong safety as a flat force wheel defender. All right, so he's going to be anywhere from 3x3 three three to 4x4. Four four. All right, some teams, when you watch TCU in college, that guy might be 7x3 to really make sure that he sets the edge. The key here is you want to keep the ball inside and in front. All right, so you're going to play that strong safety wherever you feel comfortable with him, all right, as the flat force wheel defender, okay? And then you're going to play a quarters concept behind it. The way we would do it, all right, is we would play our corner, would play man on number one, all but shallow. All right, so that corner would basically play man on all the deep routes of number one, all right? He wouldn't chase the shallow cross across the field, all right? And if he were getting underneath routes like the out or the hitch cut, all right, he would kind of void those routes out and present some help for the safety, all right, on the possible corner out of number two, all right? Depending on how good your free safety is, all right, depending on how good your free safety is, I'm sorry, the corner will help the free safety on uh, the corner routes of number two. Depending on how good he is, you might be able to get up here and press man and take away quick throws to number one. Your corner can play all of man except the shallow. You can have a lot of different adaptations to it depending on what you're trying to defend. All right, but the, the, the main goal here is when you play quarters coverage, you're going to get a ninth guy in the box. All right, your free safety is going to become the ninth defender in the box versus the run game. All right, that's how you're going to get an extra helmet all right, into the run game. And then your free safety is going to take all of number two vertical. And then if number two were to go under or to the flat, your free safety can now rob the routes of the number one receiver. That's always going to be the issue when people talk about quarters and people talk about robber. For me, quarters coverage gives me a potential double team on the number one receiver. 
All right, gives me a potential double team on a number one receiver. Depending on how you play robber coverage, if all right, you were playing robber with the corner as a half player, I think sometimes, depending on what you're asking that corner to do, if the corner is on the half and he's more of the wheel player than your strong safety is, then I don't think you get double teams. You'll get nine in the box. You'll get number two play vertical, but I don't think you'll get double teams on the number one receiver, which is why I like playing quarters coverage because I can get nine in the box. I can play aggressive on number one if I'm getting beat in a quick game with press coverage. I can press bail, show different looks, and I can double number one based on a release of number two. Okay, so we moved the front away from the tight end to put us in an over front. We brought a second level player. All right, we played quarters on the front side. All right, and we're going to play some version of cover two to the back side. Okay, all right, to this single side, we're either going to play. All right, a version of cover two, which could be, depending on where the ball was or what we thought we were getting, it could be a cloud version with corner support, where the corner's up as a flat force wheel player. All right, and depending on who the X is or where the ball is, if the ball's on a hash mark, we might get up and be real physical with that X receiver and take away the quick game. All right, if the ball's in the middle, all right, or if that X receiver isn't that big of a factor, we may vice the corner down inside and give the X a free release and get the corner more involved in the run game, okay? Weak safety will be over the top playing a deep half of that single. All right, your will would then be basically a hook to curl player. All right, your mic would be your three dropper or your strong hook dropper playing three vertical to the quarter side. All right, so we've got our standard quarters coverage with our versions of cover two on the back side. We could go ahead and make a true eight man front all right, and we can make it sky back here. We could go ahead and play sky coverage where now the safety is the flat force wheel player and the corner is more of the half player. That would look more like traditional robber coverage to most people where you are playing eight man front, all right, with a free safety robber and then maybe the corners are playing off the deep halves. We combine two theories. We play kind of a quarters theory here, and then we play a version of a cover two over here, so we're really a quarter, quarter, half defense, all right, where we're going to play quarters to the multiple, and we're going to play some version of cover two, all right, to the single receiver. Another thing we've looked at that we've seen a lot of people playing, all right, is playing some version of a man concept to the backside, where you can take away the throws, all right, you'd have number one man here, you'd play your will linebacker on number two man, all right and you'd let your weak safety be a vision and break player where he's going to be the ninth guy in the box in a run game. You're going to gain him in a run game. But if you were to get pass, all right, you're going to allow your weak safety to play off the intentions of the quarterback to where he may be able to help you to the middle of the field strong. He may be able to help you to the single weak. Okay? You can also predetermine and give him calls if you wanted to, and you could make possibly a call where he drops middle or a call where he drops to the single depending on who their players are. All right. The reason I prefer to play him as a vision and break guy is I think in high school in, in high school football, all right, we did a blog on this uh, about a month or two ago, I think you can gain this guy based off of where the quarterback looks because I don't think quarterbacks look off receivers very well in high school. So another version to the backside would be all right, a standard way of playing quarters to the backside where you're playing man on one, man on two, and you're gaining an extra safety player. It's a little bit different in theory than quarters because, all right, the only time he's really going to sit on number two vertical is if the quarterback is looking that way, and the only time he's going to rob underneath number one is if the quarterback's looking that way. Where it's different from quarters coverage is if the quarterback were to be looking strong side, I want to gain him strong side right now, so his rules would not tell him to go double number one based on a release of number two like it would all right, in, in regular quarters coverage. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to lock the wheel on number two. All right, May not play it. Don't know how much we'll play it to a pro set. We like it a little bit more to an open twin set when we're really getting hurt to the middle of the field. All right, But this is another way on the backside where you can get some man theories. The other reason I like this is if they have quick game or three step to the X, sometimes you get up there and you press and you take those routes away. All they can throw is really the fade or maybe try and throw the slant, but you got a vision and break guy to help on the slant. So I feel like you can take some of the quick game away. 
The more you can take quick game away in high school, the better you're going to be because most high school teams have some version of quick game or screens in their offense. Okay? You could also very simply move the front the other way, put yourself in an under front. All right, so you could take versus 21 personnel, you could take the same concept. All right, you could take the same concept here, and you could move the front towards the tight end. Bring the will off the edge. All right, now that you've done that, you're going to have to slide these two backers inside. Put your Sam linebacker and your Mike there. Now that you've done that, you've created an under front where to the weak side of the formation, you have a three and a five. So you, you have a reduction side here. All right, now the big bubble becomes the B gap on the front side. Okay, and then the Mike becomes the A gap player on the back side. You're still playing, all right, quarters here, some version of cover two there. All right, so you're still playing quarters or some version of cover two, all right, to that side. So your coverage behind it hasn't changed. All you've done is you've taken your front and you've gone from an over front and you've now made it an under front. So one of the great things. If you are a 3-3 stack team and you do have to teach your guys how to move and you're going to have to teach some of your linebackers, your Mike linebacker was the A-gap player and over, but he's, he's, he's now the A-gap player on the backside and under. Your Sam linebacker was a guy coming off the edge, but now he's a B-gap player. Your Will linebacker in the other front was a B-gap player, but now he's an edge blitzer. There is some hybrid teaching with those three stack linebackers. You need three pretty good players that can blitz, move, basically become a D lineman on the move, but also can play with regular linebacker reads behind it. So I think how you teach and who you have at those three stack linebacker positions is very, very important, all right, because they're going to have to do dual roles as a defensive lineman slash linebacker, okay? Got quarters front side, you've got cover two to the back side. Great thing, three, three stack is you can get from over to under real easy. All right, for other teams, it's hard sometimes to go from over to under. It changes how you use the front, changes how you do some things. In the stack, you just move from over to under real quick. All right, so you, just depending on the way you're sending the guys up front, all right, determines whether or not you're in an over or an under front. Giving the offense different fronts makes it a little bit more difficult for them to block. So you've gone from over to under with two simple movements while not changing the coverage behind it at all. <coughs> all right, let's look at it. Versus standard two by two, because that's the next thing you're probably going to see a bunch. All right, you got to be able to, in today's game, you got to be able to defend two by two. All right, so when you get two by two sets, you're going to have to, you're going to want to plan for two by two sets. Okay, so you're going to want to have a plan for two by two sets. Okay, first thing you can do, I think it's very easy, is send the front away from the Sam. Bring the Sam with it. Again, getting you back into what I would think is more of an over front, even though without a tight end, over and under look the same, depending on whether you're playing with a shade or a uh, one or a two eye. All right, a lot of people argue about over and under front. It's just where you have the open gap set or where you set the three technique. If there's no tight end and you have a three, a five, all right, and then an A-gap player and a, and a five on the back side, you really have the same front, all right? So I don't spend too much time worrying about over and under when it's not a tight end. I think you've got the same front both ways. We're going to have the three and the five with the Sam now. He's going to make himself the five. That end becomes the three. There becomes your one A-shade or A-gap player. There's your five technique on the back side, okay? Now, depending, now, that you, now that you've done that, you still have two highs, so you can play all your different versions of coverage to each side. All right, You can go ahead and play the strong safety inside of number two and now play to read on this side, where your corner and safety would read off of the routes of number two, and then you would declare how you're going to play the coverage off the routes of number two. Two to the flat, corner up, safety over one. Two vertical, all right, we play man-to-man. -man. We're basically playing the vertical routes man-to-man. -man. 
two goes under, free safety can double the routes of number one, or he can help where needed, depending on how you want to teach it. Okay? Your strong safety now becomes, all right, your two to three. I've heard some schools, a friend of mine calls it three, two, three. Okay? We call it, we call it a palm dropper who is going to make sure that he understands, don't let two cross my face, don't let three out leverage me. All right? So he's basically, in essence, he's a curl dropper until delivered to the flat. All right, three, two, three, don't let two cross your face uh, uh, and not let three out leverage you. A lot of different ways you could describe that. Your mic would stay stacked inside, primarily on inside runs. He's going to be this backside A-gap player, all right, and then he's going to want to drop, and he's going to want to be hooked to the side of where three releases. Okay, he's going to want to drop to the side of where number three releases, which is going to be the back of this two-by-two two set. Your Willie linebacker now is going to be apexed. He's going to be the fall-in B-gap player in the run game, all right? And then he's going to be the palms dropper on this side, all right? Your strong safety over here is really an extra player in the run game, all right, because there's no immediate gap for him to fall into. Your will linebacker is a fall-in player to the B-gap, all right? He is also on this side. This is what we would call our palms dropper. He is what we would call our palms dropper. That's two read. That's two read. You're playing two read to both sides. Okay, you're playing to read to both sides. All right, one of the ways you could change this up, put the willy back in the box, put the will back in the box here, all right, take this safety down a little bit tighter, take your corner down and probably press, okay, take your strong safety and go outside of number two here, Put your free safety a little bit further inside, and now play quarters here. All right, and play lock man back here. All right, quarters here, lock man to the back side. Leave the wheel in the box. All right, quarters to the front side. This will help with three-step game to the front side. It'll help with outside perimeter runs or speed options. It'll help put the strong safety in a position to turn the ball back inside. Okay. Backside, locking some things up will help if you're getting quick game, if you're getting three-step. All right, now your will linebacker has to understand that he's got that number three coming out if he releases his way. If number three goes away, all right, if three goes away, if three were, let's say if three was lined up over here and he went to that side, now you know your mic is going to drop to the side of three and find work. Your will can now basically come back and just be a guy that cuts crossers, QB draw, screens, okay? Three didn't come out to his side. He doesn't have to play a man-to-man. -man. He really becomes an extra player, all right? He's looking for shallows, crossers. He's looking for QB draw. He's looking for screens, okay? So lock is another way that you can help if you're getting a lot of QB runs, QB screens, all right? Or a lot of shallows or a lot of crossers. You can help by putting the will away from where three is in a two-by-two two set. Three goes out to the mic side, all right, and now three is out to the read or the two read or the quarter side. Now your will linebacker can become an extra cut play. All right, so that can help you, all right, that can help you in depending on what you're getting, quarterback runs, screens, draws, all right. You could very easily send the will with the front. All right, you could very easily send a will with the front. If it were me and I had to decide if I wanted to send a will with the front, I would play lock on that side and not teach the free safety anything different. So if we wanted to change up who was coming, if we wanted to change up who was coming and now move the front this way and bring the will off the edge, okay? All right, if we keep the principles the same for the free safety, free safety is gonna stay on the side of the strong safety, they're still gonna play two read. Now that the will's gone, all right, there's really no way for us to play two read unless we took the mic out to be the palms dropper, the Sam in to be the three dropper. Could we do that? Sure we could, I think that's a lot of work. What I would do to make it simple and move the front the other way is I would just make this side an auto lock. So anytime we brought the wheel, it would be auto lock to two receivers on the back side, no matter what. 
all right? It'd be auto lock for us if the will was coming, and that's just a simple rule you can build in, all right? Two receivers removed, will's gone, auto lock, all right? Now we can play two read over here, we can play quarters over here, got to play lock over here because we know the will's gone, all right? And now that, now that we understand, all right, that the will's gone, okay, the thing that we've got to be able to get to now is the Mike has to understand where three is because he would have to lock three out to the will side because the will's gone, okay? But I think that's a little bit easier determining, all right, getting the Sam to play to the side of three and getting the Mike to understand if three were to go out to his side, how he would have to lock that. And the only way you'd have to deal with that if, if, if you built it into your defense is if they traded or moved the back because if this was me using this defense, I would, I would run it away from the back all the time. All right, so that I didn't have to worry so much about the back being or the mic being man to man. I would end up with the mic as the cut player. All right, and then this would be my hook three dropper, and then this would be my two read side. Okay, so I would send, I would set the coverage in the front to the back, send the wheel away from the back, and the only thing I have to deal with, all right, is now if the back was here, okay, if the back was there and the back released out, now the mic would have to know that he's got number three man, okay, and then essentially your Sam linebacker can become a cut player because he's away from the side that three is, and three is to the side that we're playing man, so he knows that three, that one, two, and three are accounted for in man-to-man, -man, so now your Sam can become the cut. Now, that to me becomes a lot of teaching, all right? It becomes a lot of teaching. So, again, you may want to get it to where in two-by-two two you just sent the Sam linebacker, and that was the easiest way for you to play base defense. If you start sending a will, now you got to deal with some other things. Okay, again, the other thing I said you could do if you wanted to is if you had the linebackers to do it, they would just have to understand that when you send the will, the Sam becomes the three hook, the Mike becomes the palms guy, all right? And now you could, <coughs> you could play two read over here. Again, that would involve teaching him and him a lot of hybrid roles. That depends on how smart your kids are, how good you think your coaches are, how much do you want to put into your system, okay? Again, we're not a 3-3 stack team. We're a 4-2-5 team, so a lot of these rules and things for us don't have to be built in. If I was a 3-3 stack team, though, these are all the things that I would have to cover to look at and say, all right, if we send a will, if we're going to send a will, what, you know, how do we have to handle 2-by-2? Two two? What are the adjustments? What are the, what are the checks? Okay? Also remember that when you send these guys now, you don't always have to send them off the edge. You can most certainly leave a guy on the edge and send them underneath. Okay? All right, so there's a lot of different ways you can move these guys and where you can send the stack players to become effective. The more ways you can move them, all right, while still playing assignment-orientated football, the more ways you can move them, all right, the, the harder it is on the offense. So again, for me, going back to two by two, I would probably send to Sam and play defense the way I play it every down. Because again, the goal is to play fast, play physical, have your kids not overthink anything. So I would have it built into two by two. We're automatically going to send to Sam and play our base coverage behind it, and then we would probably build in pressures or something else behind that. All right. What I wanted to do though was take you through all the different scenarios if you wanted to bring different guys. All right. One of the other ones you can look at. All right, there's a lot of guys, in, when they play the 3-3 stack, a lot of guys like to work the mic with the nose. Okay, a lot of guys like to work the mic in games with the nose. Again, it's still a four-man front. Now it puts you in a tight front with double A-gap players. Okay, puts you in a tight front with double A-gap players. Okay, now you can still play two read with your fall in, all right, your fall in player to the B-gap on the backside being the will. He's your apex palms guy. He's fall into the B gap. All right. Your weak safety in your right corner can play palms. All right. Two read here, two read here. You're all playing the same thing. Okay. You're all playing the same thing. All right. Like we said, I've said this in several different blogs before. Two read, palms, blue, 
All right, there's several different ways you can call your defense. Those are all very similar theories. All right, they're all similar in nature. It's just a matter of what you call it. To me, two read is the concept. That's what we're playing. What we call it, all right, for our kids to understand, to me, it is not as relevant as the concept of playing two read. You could call it blue, you could call it palms, you could call it whatever you want. All right, there's, there's guys that call it a lot of different things. You just got to play that concept. Your Sam would now be your hook three dropper, and his fall in gap would be the B gap. Now, a lot of teams that are even front teams, this is one of the first adjustments they make. They take the nose, all right, from an even front. Let me just give you that look real quick. A lot of even front teams will take their tackle and they'll spike their tackle into the A gap, giving them a tight front, all right? And now the Mike linebacker, the Mike linebacker would be B gap, their hook three dropper, okay? So I just recreated that in the stack. All I did was recreate that in the stack by moving the nose and the mic, I just recreated that front, and now I've made this guy my B-gap hook three defender. Okay, there's my apex B-gap defender. So the very movement that a lot of even front teams do by spiking the three, all right, they spike the three and allow the mic to play B-gap to B-gap, you can do the same thing in the stack front just by playing a little tight game with the nose and the mic. <coughs> All right, so the movements in the 3-3 three, three stack with two-way goes, the movements are so good, you can get yourself into a lot of good situations as long as you can teach the situations behind it. I think split field coverage with the 3-3 three, three stack is endless with what you can do behind it. It's just a matter of how much your kids can do. All right, you can get into over, under, tight. Well, you can do so many things that the oh, that the that the you know, 3-4 or 4-3 or 4-2-5 teams are always trying to do to make it different. You can do so many things with the 3-3 stack, creating that box look, as long as you can teach your players what you want to do behind it. All right, I think, again, that's the big theory all the time. The blog is called Play Fast Football, all right? And when I struggle as a coach, it's when I do too many things and I get away from my kids playing fast. Split field coverage is meant to identify fast-moving teams, get into coverage, and play football. That's what it's meant to do. Okay, when we do these videos, I like to give you all the scenarios of how you can possibly do things. It doesn't mean you have to do them all. We're just trying to cover all these scenarios for you to understand if you were to move, how you would change coverage or how coverage would have to change. You know, I'll get questions or emails all the time about coach when if you had to play this on the back side or this on the front side. So what I'd like to do is cover as many of those scenarios as possible, knowing that when you teach your kids you're going to a game, you're going to try not to carry all those scenarios into a game. All right? Three by one will be the next one. Okay, three by one will be the next one that obviously in today's game you're going to have to defend. Again, with split field coverages uh, and, and playing five DBs as opposed to five linebackers and three DBs. All right, I think this makes this a very nice situation for the three, three stack teams. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I would move for us to play our standard split field cover to three by one. I'd show you the movement I would use. Okay. What I would do is I would move it towards the trips. And I would bring the wheel off the side of the single side. Okay. Because I'm playing five DBs, I can handle the three by one side. All right. I don't need any backside help. Because I don't need backside help, I can bracket or two for one the single side. Okay? I've said this on several blogs before. I'll continue to say it. Three by one in high school, you better be able to defend a single because that's where the ball is going to go 85% of the time. This is going to be a stud. These two are going to be studs. You're going to get speed option, anything to get the ball out here. Anything to get the ball to the single because a lot of teams have to rotate backside help strong to trips. All right, with five DBs in the game, we feel like we don't have to do that. We have a coverage over here that can basically give us four for three. 
and we have a coverage over here that can basically give us two for one on the single. If the back were out, all right, if this back were to come out weak, then we could very easily add the mic to the side of the back and we would get three for two, which in coverage, that's what you're always trying to get. In defense, you're always trying to get one extra. So I want four for three, three for two. Four for three, three for two, right? If the back were to line up strong, if the back were to line up strong and push to the front side, okay, the mic would cut the strong side, all right? And now that would give me five for four and two for one. So I would have five for four to the flood side, and I would have two for one. So I always have an extra number in coverage, all right? That's why we like playing five DBs. That's why we like our first adjustment, all right, to the trip side. All right, a lot of people look at this. They call it mini coverage, all right? Again, the coverage and what you call it is irregardless. It doesn't matter as long as your kids know. What we want to do is we want to play man-to-man -man on the number one, all right, read off of two and three, have our down player that is going to be not get out leveraged by four, don't let three cross my face. Mike becomes an extra dropper off of which side the back drops to, and we've got to the back side, we've got the sky, cloud, vision, got a lot of different things we can do on the back side to the back side single, but again, to me, the most important thing is I know I've got two for one, and I've got D-gap support. That's the biggest thing I want to know. <coughs> two for one to the single, D-gap support to the single. As long as I can do that, I feel pretty comfortable with anything else that I'm trying to do All right, within, with, within my coverage structure if I can get two for one and D-gap support. All right? If you wanted to move it away from the trips, I don't think, again, not very difficult. Just understand what you're dealing with. If it were me and I moved it away from the trips, and again, this is just hypothetically speaking, if I were playing this defense and moving all right, away from the trips, If I were going to move the defense away from the trips here and bring the Sam linebacker with it there, all right, for me it would be a lot easier to use now. Again, this goes away from the theory that I like where I use a backside safety in support, okay, but it might help your kids play a little bit faster, all right. I would go to possibly using this guy as a poach three player which is going to put me in man with the will and man with the right corner. And then here it's going to allow me to play two read off of those two receivers with these three players because now your free safety is going to be the guy that poaches number three. Okay? So if I was going to bring it away from the trips with the Sam, I would probably prefer to play this version of coverage. Okay? Why? Because it involves less hybrid teaching of players. If I wanted to use the other coverage, okay, sure you could play the other coverage. There's absolutely no doubt because you have five DBs. I could most certainly move the front away from the trips, still play the corner man, still play the strong safety and the free safety, bracket it two and three, all right? But now I've got to take the mic and put him out there. I've got to take the will and put him in there, okay? And now I still have the weak safety back here. So now I've got more hybrid teaching involved, all right? More hybrid teaching of players that have to do multiple assignments. Could I play that coverage? I most certainly could, all right? I would just have to use these two guys as hybrid guys that now have, all right, different, uh, different responsibilities, which at the end of the day is not all that bad because with trades, motions, and a lot of other things, you may get yourself into a situation where those guys have to play. So for us in the 4-2-5, we try and cross-train our mics and our wills anyways because the other team might motion or trade us into a situation where the mic is actually the will 
all right? We are, we're a divorce front concept, so there are some formations where the will might be to the side of trips, and the will might have to understand how to make that drop to trips in that coverage, okay? So although this would involve some hybrid teaching with the SAM going, now the Mike and the Will have different responsibilities, okay? You could still play that original coverage that we drew up. If that's your three by one coverage and that's what you like, you could still send the SAM and play that coverage. Just a little bit more teaching involved, all right? I think the other coverage just sets up a little bit better. Personally, it, you look just like a 4-3 team, all right? With your Mike there, your Will there, and your weak safety playing poach three, all right, and then you're just playing two read here. All right, that right there is gonna make you look like your standard four three or even possibly three four team when somebody comes out and trips. Probably the number one adjustment most people make to trips in high school, college, football, all right. That's probably the most standard adjustment everybody makes. Whatever, call it whatever you want, call it, you know, call it poach, call it steal, call it I heard one guy call it Gilligan because he puts your corner on an island. They can be called whatever you want to as long as your kids know what you're playing, all right? But that would be like a standard 4-3 or 3-4 team, all right? Now that you move the Sam, you leave these two in the box. You play two read like you always do, and then you just use a guy to poach three, all right? Again, for me, don't like it because I think you're, I think you're weaker to the D-gap, okay? And I think... <coughs> that one-on-one -on -one matchup right there is a little bit of an issue in high school, okay? But there's very simple ways that you can do it. Again, don't be afraid to, to use the mic in the game. If you're a 3-3 three, three stack team, don't be afraid to use the mic in the game. And now go there, all right? Go there, bring the mic there, all right? Leave the end there. And now your Sam becomes the dropper in coverage to this side. Your Will is the dropper in coverage to that side. You can play both coverages. You can play the poach coverage. You can play the mini coverage. You can play whatever you want. So don't be afraid to use your mic in the game as well. All right? Again, how much can you teach? How good are your players? How smart are your players? How good is your coaching staff? All right? But within that 3-3 stack, it presents a ton of options for you as a football coach with how you want to do things. Okay? Now, the last thing we're going to look at, all right, the last thing we're going to look at today is I think the 3-3 three, three is ideal for zone pressure. All right, I think, I think personally having five stand-up players that could come at any time, because essentially what you have is you have a situation where you have five second level players that can come at any time. The fact that I have five DBs on the field makes me feel like I have better athletes. I can play zone coverage behind it. I can play man free. I can play whatever I want. But the fact that I got these five stand-ups makes my pressure game, zone or man, that much better. Okay? Because now the five stand-ups can come from anywhere, and they can come in, in bunches. Okay? And you could do, I mean, you could go right away with America's Blitz, all right? And you could send the long stick here. All right, and you can go ahead and send Mike B, Sam C right there, right? So you've got America's Blitz already built in right there. You can go America's Blitz and go Mike B, strong safety, all right, C right there, and use the Sam as a dropper, all right? You could probably, with a little bit more rotation, you could most certainly go America's Blitz with Sam and Strong Safety, rotate the free safety down and rotate the weak safety to the middle. So there's a little bit more rotation involved, but at the same time you've now got three to four different versions of America's Blitz where the front is just moving the same way with the long stick and you've got three or four different versions bringing Mike Sam, bringing Mike Strong, bringing Sam Strong, You've got three different versions of, of who's coming to the offense. Those all look like different blitzes because there's different second-level players coming, and you're running the same movement pattern with your defense. You haven't changed one thing with your defense, all right? And then one slight adjustment, all you got to do is adjust the path, all right? All you got to do is adjust the path. Now that you've got blitzes taught, now all you got to do on this side is adjust the path, and here we go. 
with that pressure. All right? So now you got Mike and Sam coming A and B instead of America's Blitz. Adjust the path and go there and there. Okay? So anytime, I, anytime you have more second-level defenders, I think the zone blitz, man blitz, I think the pass of the blitz, the disguise of the blitz, who's coming, I think that's why you see a lot more teams use 3-3 three, three stack defenses as nickel. Even a lot of good college teams, they go to this look because of the pressure, the pass, who you can send, more athletes on the field. I think this situation opens itself up to a lot of great, great blitz all right, potential. All right, so that, again, today that my goal was just to cover the 3-3 three, three stack and how you can play split field coverages behind it, why I think the 3-3 three, three stack can be effective, why I think you still see so many teams use the 3-3 three, three stack, how you can get into it in 2x2 two two and 3x1. All right, just trying to throw it out there since there are a lot of 3-3 three, three stack teams, trying to maybe help some people be 3-3 three, three stack without having to be man free or three deep, all right, or single high. If you're a single high team and you're good at it, then that's great. All right, but I don't think 3-3 three, three stack means, all right, single high. I think a lot of times when you talk to people and you say, oh, they're a 3-5-3 three, three team, they automatically declare that to be single high, probably man free or three deep, okay? I think you can be a 3-3 three, three stack team with five DBs and play split field coverages. If you can do that, I think you can disguise what you're doing on the back end a lot better, and I think it'll help you defend more things than just your standard 3-5-3. Three, three. My only suggestion, if you're going to be a 3-3 three, three stack team, don't be a team that just grab bags movements, all right? Don't be a team that just says, hey, we got 90 blitzes in a 3-3 stack, and we call them axe, spear, knife, blade. Don't be one of those guys. Make sure your movements are disciplined and game planned, and make sure you're moving to take away things that the offense, is do the offense does, or you're moving to take away weaknesses within your defense, all right? I think when, when you do see the 3-3 stack struggle, it's when guys have 60 blitzes drawn up, and they're just calling them, grab bag, verbatim, you know, just calling, hey, go stack edge, stack blade, stack sword, stack knife, stack spear. I think you have to have a rhyme and a reason of what you're doing and how you're trying to attack the offense and how you protect yourself behind those movements on defense. If you can do that, I think the 3-3 three, three stack is great for high school, all right, middle school, and even down into the pop one or low. As always, guys, the most important thing is make sure you play fast. I'll see you next time.